Hello everyone, Chumenzin here, and today I'm showing you how to make a jump server to better protect your Cisco devices using Ubuntu. Uh, this will work on any um, this will work on any operating system. I just so happen to use Linux, and of course, this is not only applied to Cisco devices. It could be your Juniper devices, your Alcatel devices, other servers. Basically, the whole concept of a jump server is, is that I can put a, a server on a central network that's not accessible outside of the network at all and restrict all the devices to only have remote access from that one server's IP address or block of IPs so pretty much the server is segregated from the network um, that the other users are on and uh, will not be accessible by any means uh, from the WAN so it's a completely internal system. So basic example would be this. So currently right now, if I look at my desktop, I have my IPs 192.168.1.12. Okay, I have another server in my lab. Okay, on the two network. Okay. So I'm gonna make this, which is my NMS, okay. Uh, my network monitoring server I want that to have access to my devices but the network that my desktop is on the one dot network I don't want them to have access to my devices unless they're authenticating into this server which will have then uh, my rules for who can access what uh, I can even have time-based accesses all that other stuff okay and then on top of all that I have another Cisco device okay, that does not support SSH. So it's already kind of a bit of a hazard having that accessible from let's say the WAN or from a public network. So basically with these three set up, these three uh, de devices, I'll show you how to create it. So we'll log in first we have my account on my NMS which is just Sean in this case so I don't really have to do anything there okay I confirm that this device is source IP is 2.51 okay another thing about this is that it's just a basic config for now okay so I've enabled uh, line VTY 04 and login local okay so now what I want to do is uh, is put an access list on the line VTY 04 to only allow this device to com communicate with this device which is a router and then disallow access from my desktop here okay so to do that the very first thing on your Cisco you can just make a basic access list okay so access list 10 and then permit okay and then we'll put in the IP of the NMS server that we want to grant access to okay. then go to line VTY space 0 space 4 and then access class 10 and we want to block in coming requests okay and before applying that command I'll show you here sorry that I can access this device same device is here from my desktop so I'll exit here okay and now I will commit this change okay you'll see that I haven't lost my connection as of yet so this doesn't kill active connections so if you're doing this remotely you'll be fine I also always recommend the reload in to command for instance okay and then hit no so one you d if you were to do this remotely that way you you tell the router in two minutes reload so if I got locked out of my machine my router 
the router will reboot and go back to its uh, regular config and then just reload cancel if it worked okay so now what we'll I'll do is exit from here and I'll go ahead and try to tell that back into my device okay so it's connection refused let me try on the 2.0 network because this router uh, has two IPs <coughs> that I could possibly access and both I'm unable to access it however if I go to my jump server whoops I am able to access my router so <clears throat> basically uh, to sum this all up uh, I have my server here which I can better protect it's better to protect one server than having to protect my entire <coughs> my entire LAN network against all my users to prevent access from them instead I have one simple access list to allow uh, my jump servers um, let's say it's a slash 29 or uh, you know a there's five or six IPs I want to allow I can allow only those IPs to access my devices they will not be able to be accessed from the from the WAN at all and um, uh, in a way it's better protected especially for instance this is a Cisco 2600 which does not have uh, which its iOS does not support SSH so I've been able to protect protect it more by having one server that the that the users have to SSH into the jump server and then telnet into the device uh, so then their transaction between this let's say this desktop and this uh, router will inherently become encrypted because it's encrypted via SSH and I'm telnetting uh, telnetting through the SSH tunnel so if there's a man in the middle attack so look right here then I will not be able to see it <coughs> just uh, just like this so one one more basic uh, one more basic test okay or basic example would be this let's remove the access list just to kind of show you in in detail here I'll do no access class 10 in okay so now I'll be able to townnet into this router so now if I pull up Wireshark And I do telnet. Okay. Of course, I will see the traffic, right? We already knew that basically that's what we're going to see. Of course, there's telnet traffic. If you see in my videos from before, or maybe you've already know, telnet is very insecure. So now, la now I'll show you what happens how we can better protect this device from man in the middle just because I've now forced my users to have to SSH into a different device okay so access class 10 okay I will exit and now I have to go back into my device So first I log into the jump server. Okay, and then I can telnet into my device. And as you can see, there's no more telnet traffic. Okay, the telnet traffic from this device is now stopped and it is all SSH traffic now now one could argue 
one could argue that if I had a packet sniffer on the drum server's interface, then I'd be able to sniff that. You'd be right in that. However, this is just another layer of protection. You're still not 100% immune to a uh, man in the middle attack because if someone, like, like I said, if someone were to hack this NMS server and gain access to it, then the SSH encryption is from here to here, but not from the NMS to the device. So it's not 100% foolproof, but it does add, like, like I said a couple times now, sorry to repeat myself, but it does add a definite extra layer of protection. If you have any comments or suggestions about any one of my videos, please do leave them. Please also visit my website, www.shawmancini.com. Thank you for watching, everyone. Have a great day.